Well, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the, the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission Thursday, October 5th, 2023, meeting to order. And the uh, we will do, should we do the roll call first or the electronic participation? Uh, we should do the roll call first. All right, we will do roll call. Supervisor Galloway? Present. Supervisor Andrews? Yes. Supervisor O'Brien? Mr. Smith? Here. Supervisor Heron? Ms. Wilkinson? Here. Supervisor Barlow? Yeah. Supervisor Jones? Here. Supervisor Reed? Here. Supervisor Rutherford? Here. Commissioner Garanzio? Here. Councillor Payne? Here. That makes me rude. So the first thing we need to do, we have two members who need to participate electronically. If Mr. Smith and Ms. Wilkinson, if you will just state your location and your purpose for participating electronically, then we will take the action to allow you to participate. Mr. Smith? Thank yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Chairman. Um, I am in Fulvana County and I have COVID. So there you go. Thank you. Ms. Wilkinson? I am in Green County, and I had a late doctor's appointment with my husband. Could not run back there. All right. Thank you both. And is there a motion to allow them to participate electronically? So moved. Second. We've got a first and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. You guys are in. Thank you. Uh, for the next item, we're going to welcome a new commissioner. We have Phil Garazio from the city of Charlottesville. Good evening. We're welcome to say a few words of welcome or introduction. Okay, uh, a few words. Uh, my name is Phil Garazio. I have been a uh, planning commissioner for a little over a year. Uh, I uh, Spent most of my time in the city working on a housing advisory committee, in which I still am a still stay. Uh, and in my day job, I am the mortgage manager. And we'll just do a quick round room so you know who everyone is. Ms. Glover, would you like to start? Yeah, you yes, Glover, East Sister, Clovis, and Sarah, Mary, Lewis, and Bradley. Bernie Reed, Central District, Mass. I'm Ned Galloway. I represent the Rye District in Albemarle County. You came in here to stay in the Miller District in Albemarle County. Dave Blunt, um, Deputy Director of Director of Legislative Services at the PJPC. I'm Chief Operating Officer at PJPC. And then online, we have Keith Smith. Thank you, uh, Keith Smith. I'm the commissioner for Volvana County. Again, Ms. Wilkins. I'm sorry that you get no face, only a voice, but hopefully we'll be there next time in person. Uh, Andrea Wilkinson, I'm the uh, um, citizen representative for Green County. Well, I'm sorry you're stuck with your best. All right, welcome. Yeah. So we'll do Susan. Uh, uh, I, I don't have a voice and I'm at home sick. So thank you to my team for doing it for me. Christine Jacobs, executive director. Yes, Lauren, uh, Lauren, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. I am here. Uh, hey. My name is Goran Gergievsky. I'm the body administrative assistant for uh, TJPDC. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And Lucinda? Uh, um, Lucinda Shannon, I'm a uh, communication center in the And just in a minute, we have Mr. O'Brien, Tony O'Brien from Louisiana County. We're introducing Phil. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item matters from the public. And do we have any, there's no one in the room from the public. I see no public online. Well, he's not yeah. asked to participate the last few times. Sean, you gotta participate again someday. Um, so we will close matters from the public. 
no comments, email. So then we will get to number 2C, a public hearing for the proposal for providing universal broadband access. And Mr. Black, you're going to review this before? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, just briefly, um, you may recall at your September meeting that uh, you voted to accept an unsolicited proposal for publication and then consideration of the pursuit to your PPEA guidelines. That proposal will be submitted by Firefly Fiber Broadband uh, to provide internet and additional unserved areas within the current 13 county uh, project area. And we have TJPBC to be the lead applicant for uh, body 2024 funding. Uh, we followed up that um, meeting with posting the um, receipt of that proposal. And provided for a 15 day period for competing proposals to be submitted and pursuant to your guidelines. We received no competing proposals. Um, uh, this proposal was really just an extension of the 2020 uh, 2022 project that we're uh, currently administering. Uh, much of the proposal that was submitted by Firefly uh, this time is what you had approved last year. Uh, for submittal in the 2023 round, which was uh, not a successful application, uh, but includes coverage of additional areas in Greene County, as well as Madison and Cumberland, and then also investigating some additional areas for uh, possible service in Louisa County, as well as Goochland and Paddington. The staff has reviewed the proposal, uh, found it to be in conformance with the PPEA guidelines. Um, and again, if you can you just kind of color that coverage map. Uh, with high speed internet access across the region. So, um, I will have a staff recommendation for you if you want to do the public hearing. And then I'll be glad to provide that. All right, we will open the public hearing. Is there anyone here wish to speak to this item? No, Sean, on, uh, we will close the public hearing. So now the matter is back to, you said you want to do staff recommendation? Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you all approve this resolution, this draft resolution is in your packet that you have before you, then we would uh, provide, TJPDC would provide a notice of intent to apply uh, for body 2024 funding uh, that would go to the Department of Housing and Community Development. And then we would continue to analyze the proposal. Uh, we'll be working with Firefly um, to um, do as, as much as we can to enhance the proposal so that it can be successful based on um, you know, a debrief that we had with um, DHCD following the 2023 round. And uh, we work with them moving forward. Uh, the application deadline is not until, well, I think, the week before Christmas. So we're in pretty good shape time now. So um, staff is certainly um, ready to recommend approval of the resolution, Steve. Correct. Chairman, I would approve, make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Okay. All right. The motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. And Ms. Ms. Wilkinson, did you? I'm sorry, I, I did not shout I quick enough. <laughs> we, there it is. So we're good. Thank you. All right, we will go to item number three presentations. And the first, the PJPDC Regional Kind of Governance Study Update. That is Lucinda here with us this evening. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Um, so as you all know, we are conducting a regional transit governance study. It is about a little more than halfway through. It is, um, we're planning to end it in December. And I'm just going to give you a little update about how it's going. We recently had a... This one? 
Um, I think it might have just been on the uh, okay. on the bar menu. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, we recently had a steering committee meeting, and this is kind of part of the, that presentation and an update on what we found during the steering committee meeting. So the project started with goals, looked at existing conditions and talked to transit providers and jurisdictions about the existing conditions for the um, transit in the region. And this study is looking at just a quick background, um, how the region can collect additional revenue that would be dedicated to transit to support the regional transit vision plan and also how it could manage that additional revenue and make decisions around it and be accountable for it. So we'd have to set up some type of structure of a board to be able to, to do that, to manage the funds. So we looked at um, peer regions in the area and how they govern and fund their regional transit. We engaged the jurisdictions and talked with them about their needs for transit and how they think that um, a governing structure should look. And then we looked at revenue generation for the region and we went back to the peer studies and looked at how they were funding their transit and, and evaluated if it would work for this region. Um, we also, again, engaged the jurisdictions and talked with them about their thoughts on the different types of revenue generation that we found would be applicable to this area. Um, and now we're working on governance options, um, which would be how we would make decisions around how that funding was spent and be um, accountable for it. So some of the things that we discussed in the steering committee meeting was board membership. We heard from the jurisdictions when we were meeting with them individually that they um, were concerned that they were not gonna get their fair share. If they were contributing to a regional transit fund, you know, how are the decisions gonna be made? You know, is a rural county making decisions for the city of Charlottesville? Are the rural counties gonna get enough funding and enough out of it? Like there was a lot of concern about that. So we we talked about, you know, who would be on the board, how would we determine what voting powers board members and jurisdictions had? Um and we also talked about the role of the authority in transit planning and decision making, because this is another tool that we can use. Not only is um, voting membership on the board a way to ensure that jurisdictions are receiving what they want out of the um, transit governing body, but uh, we can also do a plan and have a system for prioritizing the, the um, services in the plan and have the board agreeing on those types of things of how they're gonna be spending the money and how the funding would be allocated. So there's there's a lot more tools than just board membership that we can look at to make sure that everybody's getting their fair share. Um, so some other things were, um, you know, with the representation, we could have a technical advisory committee made up of staff from the jurisdictions, um, talk about decision-making criteria and have a process for that that everybody agrees on. And then financial reporting and funding oversight would definitely be part of the accountability. So the current state of transit funding um, kind of looks like this. It's both about $9 million a year. Um, the federal assistance for JAUNT is a little bit more than it typically would be. Um, because of COVID relief funds, so that will go down. And then the Regional Transit Vision Plan um, proposed two different service networks of public transit. The first one was constrained, and it was what the consultants thought that we could afford in this region. And then the other one was unconstrained, and that was just like, you know, if we if money was no object, what, what would we, we do and what would it look like for the community? Um, so the um, if you look at the chart here, you can see that um, the cost for the constrained and the unconstrained is at the top. And then the anticipated federal and state contributions, um, you can see as you increase the services, you're increasing the state contribution by quite a bit because it's based on ridership. So that would be bringing a lot more money into our area to provide these services. Um, and then the bottom row is the deficit of what we would need to make up as a, like a, locally as a region um, 
those for you know to to implement some of those services and the services it's not like one package or the other it's you know we can start with a couple bus routes and then continue to go maybe work our way up to the constrained and then continue on to the unconstrained plan um, as we grow and develop more resources for it so the we looked at six different funding options in your packet, you'll see there's two slides that kind of weighs the pros and cons of the different funding options. And um, the good news is that uh, sales tax is the only option that we looked at that would require state legislative approval. Um, all of the other ones are in the realm of the local jurisdictions. So um, in your packet, you'll see there's a couple tables, well, I guess there's six, um, each with the different sources so this, this table is the estimated revenues from sales tax. And we just did a 0.7% sales tax increase. And you can see it's broken down by the different jurisdictions. And um, you know, in fiscal year 2025, it's estimated that we could raise $36 million um, for transit. So it is possible to reach those funding, um, those funding, costs to be able to implement the regional transit vision plan. So I'm not gonna like read all of these out, but um, we looked at the lodging tax also and an increase in that. Um, and then personal property tax um, and real estate tax. Sorry, can you go back to the lodging tax one? Sure thing. There you go. I think Fluvanna doesn't have a um, transit occupancy tax at the moment. And you don't, if you're in the process of passing that. Okay. All right, well, that's good news. Um, yeah, do you wanna look at the other ones? Yeah, I agree, just this one. Yeah, yeah, so there's a sales tax. Um, so in the first year we could yeah, raise $36 million. Um, the lodging tax would be $1 million in the first year. The personal property tax, 12 million. Um, the real estate tax, 50 million. And that's just like a 1% increase. I have, um, I have extra handouts if you want them. And it's also in your packet. Okay, so then the next steps, um, we're going to be meeting individually with the jurisdictions again. I'm scheduling those meetings right now um, to talk about, we, we have already met with them and talked about like what they think about the different revenue options and how politically feasible it is. And now we're going to be talking with them about um, how, how, what they would accept for a governance structure and what that would look like for them to, to be acceptable to join something like this. They, we currently have legislation um, to have a body and or a regional transit authority, and it is Albemarle and Charlottesville, and then the other jurisdictions are um, allowed to join. So we don't have to have all the rural jurisdictions. We wanted to start from that point to include all the rural ju jurisdictions so that they have the option and we kind of plan for that. But if they choose not to join, that's fine. And they can join later on if they want, they can join and leave. Um, you know, it's not, uh, you know, make it or break it if we all don't join. And then we'll finalize the development of the governance options and um, post a final um, memo, the last, like last tech memo about the different options and pros and cons. And then we'll produce a final report, which will have recommendations of what a governance structure would look like that would be acceptable to the region. And also um, what types of revenue sources would be acceptable for the region. And then um, that's all. Questions? Um, for the revenue sources, or yeah. okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking out on kind of the family context of one thirty, and the category generally 
you know, this would be dedicating that point seven, correct? Right? Yeah, so it would be adding an additional point seven and dedicating that to transit. Um, so basically, that's this point seven for seven. Right. Um, okay. So that would be additional. So we did that or at 5.3, yeah, 5.37. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's not that you have to get them all to agree to the one revenue stream. They could probably pick the revenue stream in their jurisdiction that they want to follow. I don't have the answer to that. Um, I don't see why not personally, I don't but there are six jurisdictions yeah. all to agree to a sales tax. Like one might do a property tax, or one yeah. might do this, or one might just pay for it out of their general fund, whatever mm -hmm. their contribution is. So you've got to make a recommendation of how you can get the revenue there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily mean everybody walked into that unless they can obviously you can't take faith in that okay. What they do, even if they want to participate, but to participate. Um, now this isn't broke out by like how the TJPC everybody pays based on the population that per the capita that we do. This is just what each you just broke it out. Well, I mean, yeah, this is you know kind of estimating at the same rate. An increase at the same rate, but it doesn't have to be. Um, we haven't explored like how much each jurisdiction should contribute um, yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously a very a long way to go. Very preliminary conversation after city council received some of this information. It seemed like the, the city council had a little bit more. Um, Reluctance, maybe on the real estate tax mm -hmm. side of the revenue source. Of course, a long way to go, so we by any means say it's ruled out, but um, so we've got our real estate tax relief program as well as an agreement with schools that would take out a chunk of um, any increased revenue from there. So I think we've at least begun to think about whether it be this legislative session or the next one, maybe including something about the sales tax and the legislative packet, because it seems like there was at least. At this moment, greater alignment around that is a feasible option. But just a comment. The the rule of transportation, I mean, the transportation plan has been uh, since, say, Charles went on the pretty extensive transportation system there. It, it's really the benefit of the rural communities to go to the communities of our Um, No, because the. the no, I think that the city and Albemarle are um, pretty support. They're very supportive of the vision, the transit vision, because it, it will be um, increasing. So it'll keep all the current services and then it's going to um, increase the headways between buses in Charlottesville, like the cat buses would right now the headways are like an hour to 30 minutes. They would be like every 15 minutes to every 20 minutes, which would be a tremendous improvement. It would also extend the service hours. Mm -hmm. So like now you can't ride the bus on Sundays, but the bus would be available seven days a week and it would be available later at night. One of the things that we found in the focus groups for the vision plan was that service workers were late into the evening, especially at restaurants, and they were not able to get home. Um, they work on weekends and they were living out in rural areas where it's less expensive to, to live and having to take a taxi to and from work, um, which is a lot of money for somebody <laughs> from a rural area, you know, going in and making a minimum wage. So that would be a tremendous help to um, the area as well. And the, the rural jurisdictions, the plan would be to have um, a fixed route bus that goes from like an urbanized area in each of the counties and in into the city um, every hour and then have the micro transit like the lift service but public transit 
and have that connecting people to the hourly service that goes into the urbanized areas. So it'd be a tremendous improvement for the rural areas as well. Yes. So I have a question. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't at the meeting. Oh, yeah. But um, I'm wondering, uh, can if if you were not participating in the study in the coalition of all the counties, um, uh, uh, a county could still implement any of these on their own. Mm -hmm. So then what's the benefit of doing it together as opposed to just you know taking steps on the county to well if if you wanted to raise the sales tax if the region came together as one group and wanted and asked the legislature to do that, it would be a much stronger ask than just having individual jurisdictions do that. Um, also, the like the economies of scale, like it would be better to have one planning agency, one plan, one executive director. Like it just would be more economical for us to do it together. And then also it would be much better for coordination of you know how those buses meet up and the, how the service providers interact. And do you have different branding on the two different jurisdictions, buses, and do people, how do they transfer? It just adds a lot more complexity. And we're really trying to get everything kind of merged together, especially for the public where it's like one facing, you know, one face where you go to one place and learn how to ride the bus just one time. <laughs> Um, as opposed to like going from you know one jurisdiction system to another one. And I don't, I can't remember if I'm mixing, but doesn't this allow us to then draw down some of this for the authority as well? So mm -hmm. I mean, there's benefit financially that if you go in as a group, that that opens up a new tranche of funding that's available that right. everybody could benefit from. But mm -hmm. otherwise, what we get. And you had mentioned like a, a huge amount of the funding is dependent on the ridership, which yeah, I can go that, that back split to up that. The ridership is smaller. It's going to be less federal money to cover everything. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a huge amount. So if you look at the state contribution, um, it increases tremendously. you know, as we add services. So there's there's opportunity to bring in more funding um, from the state and the feds uh, if we are providing more services together. And so if we're able to count the rides from all of the jurisdictions, then um, it gives us more leverage to get that additional funding. So it's still not 100% clear as to what the legislation is to have. So right now we have the authority to form a transit authority. Um, we don't have any funding for it. So we would be going, well, first we wanna make sure that what we have current in the current legislation is what works for the region and what all of the jurisdictions want to have. And the second thing is to, we would be going to make any changes that came out of this study that were recommended to the legislation. Um, but then the, the big ask is to have um, a, an increase in sales tax or some other- but Wouldn't that be for the entire state? No, 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 it would be by jurisdiction. When the original legislation to give the authority to be an authority path, that is one bill. The separate bill to provide the revenue source, authority bill path, revenue bill. You have to look at the authority bill, whether you need to maintain the rest of the Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, that will take us to number four, the consent agenda. We have the minutes of the September 7, 2023 meeting and the August financial reports. Uh, is there a presentation or on the financial report? Uh, any changes to the minutes of the September 7th meeting? Did anybody caught notice? 
All right, well, then we need a motion to approve the other one that can second them. Someone else. Got a motion? We have a second. Second. All right, made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 There and I have some names because I was waiting for Mr. Smith there. Are you going? I'm going to abstain, Mr. Chairman, since I wasn't present. Gotcha. So we have two abstentions, the rest of our eyes. Three abstentions. Three abstentions. Let's do this again. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. I abstain. Four. Yeah. Three. You got four Keith, Mr. Yep. Brother, Mr. Barlow, and Mr. Oh, Sarano. Yeah. I wasn't there. Five. Yeah. Well, I got you. <laughs> That's right. We need you guys around the line. Yeah, you're right. We went to State 4-H horses. Yeah. Horses, that's what I remember. Horses. 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 Is it possible to split split up the vote? Because you know, obviously, we can vote on the financials, but not the the minutes. Don't know if that makes sense. Oh, it's you're right because the extensions are on the minutes, not the financials. Thank Good. you, sir. Thank you, sir. So did that. Let's redo the motion. Uh, recall that. Who made that motion initially? Okay. So recall that motion. No, I recall the motion. And now we'll do a vote of approval of the minutes of September 7th. So moved. Second. All right. Let's do a roll call. Yes. Supervisor O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Smith. Abstain. Supervisor Heron. Ms. Wilkinson? Yes. Uh, Supervisor Barlow? Abstain. Supervisor Jones? Abstain. Supervisor Reed? Yes. Supervisor Rutherford? Abstain. Commissioner Duranzio? Abstain. Councillor Payne? Yes. Now we need a motion to approve the August financial reports. Aaron, I move we approve the financial reports. For a second. Second. All right, moved and seconded. This one I think we can just do by acclamation. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Aye. All right. One abstention. Put me on the toes there. All right, number five, new business, Department of Housing and Community Development, and a funding contract, David? Uh, yes, just briefly, um, for those of you that were, were here last year in October, we went a little bit, a little bit of a deeper dive about CJPDC's relationship with uh, Department of Housing and Community, Community Development. I call them our parent agency. Uh, that's where state application for PDC explodes through the ACD. Um, but along with that, there is an annual requirement that uh, all the PDC submit an annual uh, report uh, to the ACD to describe their activities for the previous uh, fiscal year. Um, upon approval of that report, the ACD then um, starts the money flow. So um, we submitted our annual reports by the September 1st deadline um, here a little over a month ago. And the report has been approved. So uh, what you have in your packet is the contract that the ACD uh, sends. And uh, it really just lists the PDC's responsibilities in order to receive a state fund. So um, Christina signed the contract uh, and it's at the ACD. I'm not aware that they've signed it. But once that is fully executed, uh, state payment to uh, TJPDC is just under 90000 a year, 89971 
So upon um, execution of that contract, uh, we should get the first two quarters of payments uh, from the state, which is shy of 45,000. So that's just a little information uh, item for you about the contract. Any questions of that? We'll move to 5B, Virginia Association of Planning District Commission funding requests. This is actually a good segue, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we're talking about funding for PDC, because I wanted to um, bring you all some information about a request for additional state funding that the Virginia Association of Planning District Commissions uh, will be making as we head into the 2024 session. Uh, next slide, please. Just going to uh, run through these 25 slides very briefly. Um, the just a little background. The um, code, as you know, provides a framework for PDCs, emphasizing the um, cooperation and collaboration between local governments, but also that state and local partnership. Um, there are 21 PDCs. Some, some are known as regional commissions or regional councils in Virginia. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there's uh, state funding for most of the PDC with 89971 per year. Uh, the three largest PDCs, Northern Virginia, Richmond area, and Hampton Roads, um, have higher amounts. Excellent. Uh, so uh, just a little background, state funding for PDCs has really fluctuated uh, over the years. Um, but what we've seen really since um, the Great Recession, so the past 15 years, uh, is that we've been below uh, what those, uh, those high levels were. Uh, you can see there, there was a high of $90,000 per PDC uh, in 2006, much higher uh, amounts around that time, maybe even a little bit earlier, was the high for the largest three. Uh, Great Recession fell to about $66,000 per year, uh, was then several years later bumped up to uh, $75,971 again for all the three largest. Uh, and it was pretty stagnant for about 10 years. And then BAPDC several years ago had an initiative to get us back up to about where we were at that all time high um, by asking for an additional 14,000 per PDC. That got us to the 89,971 amount um, that we have now. Um, so, you know, therefore, total base funding, the 89 times 18, and the others is, is about $2.1 million in the current fiscal year state funding for PDCs. Next slide, please. So VA PDC is requesting uh, that there be additional money for each PDC included in the governor's budget. Uh, this is the year that um, governor will introduce a budget for two years, the biennial budget for fiscal year 25 and 26. Um, it's going to be a big ask. It is a big ask. We're asking for an additional $150,000 per PDC per year. Uh, that equates to $3.1 million um, for each year. So over the two years, a $6.2 million act. Uh, we have made that formal request to the governor, a uh, letter signed by the BAPDC president was sent last week. And then we're in the process of trying to set up some meetings with governor's staff, as well as some cabinet officials to talk about that request. And I think there's one more slide. Yeah. In addition to that, um, BAPDC uh, sent out this week some materials to all of the PDCs um, asking really their, their supported advocacy materials. There was a copy of the governor's, uh, the letter to the governor. Um, there's a sample letter for the PDCs to provide to their member uh, jurisdictions, their county, cities, and towns, asking them to you know, put, a, put their own flavor on why the PDC is important to them, the value, the benefit that they get out of their, their original PDC. Um, and uh, and then there was also some um, some talking points that were included in what was sent out. So really trying to utilize the PDCs, the local governments, um, you know, to support this request. Um, we're going to also be working to, uh, on the legislative side, we're also going to be working to uh, informed legislators and leadership, working with money committee staff uh, at the General Assembly to make sure that they are aware of this request. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, just really you know, trying to do a focused effort at the IFC, PDCs, local governments. Um, you know, VML and VACO already have positions of support for increased funding for PDCs and their legislative platforms. Uh, so really trying to come up with support for this request. 
Um, you know, if there's nothing included in the governor's budget, then we want to also, and again, one of the, the legislators in advance uh, being in a position to um, go to legislative route with some budget amendments to um, try and enhance that funding. So, uh, we will plan at your November meeting to bring forth either a letter uh, or a resolution asking you all to support um, the request that's being made for the increased funding. So I believe that was the last slide, Mr. Chairman. Do you have any questions? Questions here? Comments? Are you asking each jurisdiction then too, separately? We, yeah, we asked the PDCs to do that, to, to, to reach out to their individual jurisdictions for the members to uh, write a letter, um, pass a resolution, recognizing that in some cases, uh, depending on where you're located and what your politics may be, it may not be um, you know, the best um, uh, tax to write a letter together. Um, but you know, in that case, uh, endorse a letter or endorse a resolution sent to the PDC, uh, inform the legislators. So we're really just trying to, to make sure that we cover a lot of different things. But you will, you know, the jurisdiction, you all in your local jurisdictions will be receiving information from us uh, as well. That will be asking you to do at the local level and then uh, as well as bringing something to the commission. Very good. Thank you. That will take us to uh, six old business and A is the fiscal year 24-28 agency strategic plan. And Ruth is going to have another question this evening. Yes. Um, the draft uh, strategic plan is in the packet. There were no additional feedback comments received after the September commission meeting presentation on the draft strategic plan. So at this time, staff is recommending a motion to adopt the PJPZ fiscal year 24 to 28 strategic plan. Unless you have additional questions or comments at this time. Great. Additional questions or comments? Not seeing any, so we can take action. I do like that the items are now, the actions are right there. And <laughs> thank you, Chad. I think making that switch over. Uh, is there a commissioner who wishes to make that motion? I move that we adopt the TJPDC fiscal year 24, um, 20 years of future. Sure. All right, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? That was one. You're going to abstain? You got one abstention? No, Commissioner. I don't think I'm yet entitled to the page. Oh, you can vote. Come on. Okay. But well, it's your choice. Uh, very good. That's Is a recommendation and abstain or one abstain. Thank you. Then that will take us to uh, B, fiscal year 25 projected operating budget. And I'm sorry, David, you said you were going to ask. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And likewise, um, uh, with the strategic plan, there were no additional comments or questions uh, that staff has received since your September review of the FY25 projected operating budget. Uh, remember, this is the one that is submitted to the local governments with next year's local funding request, uh, 60 cents per capita rate. Um, the only significant changes from what was presented to you last month. Uh, was the addition of twenty-three thousand dollars in federal funding from the Southeast Crescent, uh, Southeast Regional Crescent Commission, Southeast Crescent Regional Commission, it's one of those, um, which we did talk about, and, and you actually adopted a resolution uh, uh, related to that. Uh, and then just uh, just a reminder, um, you know, this is your first crack at this fiscal year twenty-five budget. We'll uh, have another um, budget presented to you. Uh, in April for your consideration and then approval in May, and that one will be one that um, it will likely have some changes um, uh, due to additional grants or programs that have been applied. So uh, budget uh, sources of all the revenue, um, the per capita contributions, and the draft resolution uh, support uh, for approval. Uh, are all included in your packet and staff would recommend your approval of the 
fiscal year 25 operating budget. Questions on the budget? Very nice. Just make the comment that the if you're looking for more information on the Southern Crescent Regional Commission, the materials would be in the last meeting. September, yes. Um, if you want to go through and see that, what's in there, you're going to learn more about that for commissioners that were uh, not in attendance at that meeting. Um, but that was presented at the last one. All right, then we need a motion to uh, uh, approve the fiscal year 25 TJPDC projected budget. I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. All right. Oh, yeah. Uncount right. And note that Mr. Smith did give a physical acclamation there for I. So you got everybody vote in there. All right, thank you. Moving right along. So that will take us to number seven, the executive director report. And my and David will be handling this one this evening. Yeah, Mr. Chair, very briefly, um, Christine's report is in your packet. I'm uh, just going to take a minute or two to highlight a couple of items uh, for you. Uh, one is to let you know that most of our staff here were able to uh, participate in the United Way Day of Caring. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a really uh, neat project out at Central Elementary School in Burnett County, um, working to paint what uh, I would call asphalt games. Um, here you can see some pictures on the screen uh, on, on the blacktop that had recently been seal coated. Um, some of them, we did some 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 repainting. Um, there was some really you know the creative ones among staff did a great job of um, coming up with some new games to paint. That is the Central Elementary School mascot, Sparky. Is that the school that name? Sparky. So uh, uh, Lori Jean, uh, who you heard from last year, uh, or last year, last uh, month, um, you know, talking about HPG and home. Um, did, did the painting on Sparky, yeah, just did a phenomenal job. But great project, a lot of good teamwork, a lot of um, just good camaraderie with the folks there. And we're actually hoping to, uh, they actually have two play uh, two black pops that they wanted to work on when we had time for one. So we're hoping to, to schedule something to, um, to go back there uh, in a couple of weeks to see if we can do that second black pop. Um, secondly, as, said, as, as was mentioned, the uh, additional $23,000 for the Southeast Crescent Regional Commission funding, that's you know, really just for some um, regional administration planning, technical assistance uh, with an eye toward promoting economic development uh, in the region. And I know as we um, uh, get into um, we get into that money and get into spending that money, that, uh, we'll have more to tell you about, you know, about how that's going. I uh, wanted to point out last week's um, Rivanna River Basin Conference was held um, over that Mount County office building. We had 51 registrants for the conference uh, focused on PFAS, the forever chemicals. I uh, had some really good presentations uh, from both federal and state as well as local officials. Had some really good Q&A, some good uh, discussion uh, during that morning conference. And, Kudos to Bella, uh, as well as Brian, um, for putting that together. It's a really, really good program. And then finally, uh, so let you all know that uh, the auditors have been here this past week. Robinson Farmer Cox has been in Monday through Thursday of this week conducting the annual audit. Um, Laura and Ruth, I think, did a phenomenal job of getting uh, all of our financial um, records in order uh, in preparation for the auditors to be here. Um, from what Ruth tells me, they spent more time uh, looking at records digitally this time around, uh, which probably helped with the, uh, the efficiency of, of getting the audit done. Um, but as in the past, um, we will have the uh, Finance and Executive Committee uh, meet uh, prior to your November Commission meeting, at which time we would expect Robinson Farmer Cox to be here to do a little bit of a deeper dive about the audit and the findings uh, with the, the finance and executive committee, and then have them stay over and come to the commission meeting to give a bit more of a broader, high level view of the audit for the commission meeting. 
I always have to ask if I'm supposed to show up for that at the six o'clock. That'd probably be a six o'clock in advance of the seven o'clock uh, commission meeting. Yeah, so. and my question is, am I supposed to show up? This is Andrea Wilkinson. Uh, we would love to have you. Okay, I'll be there. Thank you. I'll be sending out, this is Christine, I'll be sending out a calendar invite for that following this meeting for the four that are supposed to attend. Thank you. Any questions or comments here? Well, we're speaking number eight other business, but I want to take a discussion. We're in the round table before eight o'clock. No financial bank. Did I miss something? Just making sure because we did move the action items up into the it's a little off uh, there. All right, we'll, we'll do the round table discussion. I'll go online first. Ms. Wilkinson, would you like to speak for Green County? I will have to, since Dale is not here to do it. We do have a lot of uh, development going on, um, some new items coming up. Uh, for one thing, uh, our Terrace Green has started. They've uh, broken ground for some new townhouses. They have a proper that they have to do X amount of commercial with it. They may put some of the commercial under the residential stacked. If they do that, it'll be the first time we did that since Standardsville 200 years ago, when of course everybody lived over their shop. So um, anyway, that's that's one thing. We've got uh, another um, small 120 unit age restricted apartment complex going up uh, across from uh, Dunkin Donuts and Route 29, if you know where that is. And, um, we have a Wawa coming in. Also, we have uh, recently had a um, development in Stansville decide to go from uh, single family homes, 500 of them, to single family homes and uh, townhomes and possibly they are allowed to do uh, business, but they don't expect to. So that's a weird one. Anyway, um, other than that, everything is pecking along as usual in uh, Green County. Thank you very much. We'll go stick with the uh, online. Mr. Smith, would you like to speak for Cluvanna tonight? Um, everybody in the room is going to be shocked by this, but I'm a little brain dead from COVID, so I'm actually going to shut up, and that's a rare, rare thing. Um, but uh, what I do want to take a second and give a little shout out to Ruth, uh, and particularly to the yeoman's job she's done taking over the RHP. Um, she's really doing a great job, so I just wanted to give a quick little shout out, and uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to nurse my headache and uh, put this on mute, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. O'Brien? Uh, well, as I mentioned, we've got the, the, the wheels in motion for the regional occupancy tax. Uh, and along with that, maybe we don't actually have the ones in place for short uh, term rentals. So we're looking at uh, putting that in place. It's kind of a home stay, by the way, it's a good for the short term rentals. Continue progress in the Zion's Press Program for the development group, which is pretty exciting. Um, the, uh, uh, the, apartments, uh, the apartments that are uh, coming up in Charlottesville, I'd say, I mean, not Charlottesville, you can uh, do that. You might have to find it some quick to three when it comes to that. It has uh, caused quite a bit of consternation. It's uh, affordable housing uh, apartments that are uh, being put in by the people groups. Uh, along with the uh, whole development there. Um, and uh, uh, not so upset that you know, this is kind of the place that's, I would not say, the gateway of the community. Uh, but it's a, it's a needed mix of housing. We don't really have any apartments in Cleveland at all. Um, and we continue to see housing pressures uh, coming through the areas we want to as they're being passed from one town to the other. So I think ultimately it would be a pretty positive. And the downside side is all the initial construction that happened. 
uh, which of course involves a land clearing, which, which is upsetting to people. Um, we then had, uh, they had put in sort of a little water tower, a small water tower for suppression, but uh, it wasn't really provided enough pressure. So they had to put it right in front of the ground and had even more consummation to do it, which of course is a little bit unfortunate from that standpoint. Um, so uh, that, that all comes on the heels of Aqua Virginia having had four or five failures of their system in the lake. And understandably so, just with all these factors coming into play, it's going to be a big flaw that they involve the U.S. good assets, particularly that, other than the sewage we make, which I know we would like. But uh, but in the internal workforce, you know, the improvements, you know, they've got an agent system there, and you know, require them to use them. Out there, you know. I think it's about all that's exciting to report right now for that. Thank you. I'm going to go on the paper. All right. Uh, we've got to explain the meetings. Yeah. Short, shortest the uh, meetings of the year. Yeah. Uh, we did, we've done some work on legislative priorities, which is ongoing. And we've got to come back to that. Uh, we uh, worked on our housing assistance program last night. And, uh, Changed uh, from this was ninety thousand one hundred was the maximum to thirty thousand uh, for housing uh, down payment assistance, uh, zero interest, uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, so uh, processing the administrative fee. Uh, we looked at transportation priorities and mostly for profit rather than actually talking about things. We did that over and over again. And we have a tech time, I think. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharp Bailey from uh, Virginia Tech came and gave us an economic report on the nation, the state, and the county. And it's always fascinating. Right? It's a lot of economic data thrown at us, and we take our time adjusting it. I think it's informative that we're pretty good shape, but we have to continue to be present uh, and you know, aware and agile. To respond to changing circumstances. Yeah, uh, Supervisor Andrew was chairing both of these two meetings that finished early. So he stepped in for that role. <laughs> because, yeah, but, uh, so we'll take credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't really add a lot for Applebarrel, but I will take the chance to speak to some stuff that's related to TJPDC. The uh, Charlottesville Alamo Metropolitan Planning Organization and the Stanton Augusta Waynesboro Metropolitan Planning Organization. We are the only two MPOs in the state, if I remember hearing this correctly, the meeting that meet together and do a joint annual meeting, which we did a few, uh, that was the 20th, if I'm remembering right, something like that, a Wednesday there in September. Um, and we got, I got, uh, there was a presentation on the Crozet Tunnel, Nelson County, lots of accolades coming along, and, and, and the work that was done there to, to make that happen. Um, so you guys are getting a lot of uh, uh, pats in the back at the, at the joint meeting. I didn't know the history of the tunnel, so it was fascinating to just learn about the tunnel. What Waynesboro and Augusta County are doing over there to partner to make uh, potentially bring a state park to the area west of the mountain and a greenway that they have over there is all very interesting uh, to hear about. And then they also, the Athens Express. So they were talking about the regional transit update that we got today, the governance study, but it made me think of the success of Augusta, the Athens Express that runs from Stanton over to Charlottesville and they extended hours for night shifters. So that those who have to start work at seven and they get done at seven in the morning, they extended those hours out so that those night shifters could have access to the public the app and express both in the morning and the evening as they're coming and going to work. Um, good example of regional cooperation there. Um, somebody's calling in to ask questions. Uh, so that was good. And then the uh, I'll just call out the CD. The, start, uh, the Commonwealth Transportation Board did meet on the 20th of September as well. They discussed economic development and was it environment or land use again? Environment, probably, that was not discussed yet. But changes to smart scale are coming, mm -hmm. and they will be making the final decisions on that later this fall. But 
there have been two work sessions by the CDB now, and the NPO will continue to receive update on that. I just offer as a good last meeting. If your jurisdiction would be interested in receiving a, a good overview, Sandy Shackelford of the NPO, uh, who's the main lead for that, would, I would imagine be welcome to come out to the member jurisdictions to provide information if you're wanting to get ahead of what the changes to smart scale are, because it really is going to change who can ask for what and um, what it means for jurisdictions to get transportation stuff around. That's all I got. Um, yeah, we've got a uh, zoning rewrite process underway. Um, still, I think a ways to go. A number of council work sessions. And I anticipate council will be having a lot more discussion and some changes before we're in a place where something's ready to pass. But that process will play out. Um, budget process, just very beginning. We're starting to get some presentations from departments about their requests uh, and some of their updates and, and you know budget season early. And of course, probably the big thing, we do not like to keep things boring in Charlottesville. So we've been back in the news with the situation in Market Street Park. Um, as always, you know, the part sometimes in the public conversation to focus on what is happening, what are the solutions. Um, but those are in a way the city manager presented an action plan related to homelessness. And I think some of the highlights are. Um, the city recently approved rezoning for the Salvation Army to double their shelter capacity, as well as build a few unit permits for the housing. Obviously, in partnership with Albemarle County and near Circle, construction of about 80 permits for the housing units for homeless individuals are underway by about two years away from completion. Um, and the city manager has been working with Potchum to accelerate the beginning of their shelter season, hopefully bringing it up um, as soon as possible within the next few days as opposed to uh, the end of October um, and following that providing spaces for all the individuals who are both at Market Street Park as well as not there. Our homeless population is about 260 currently. Um, and then outside of that, looking at are there uh, locations in the city to identify for the construction of a permanent year-round overnight shelter, which is something that does not exist in our region um, and the need for that as well as uh, locations for partnerships to build more permanent supportive housing. Even with Premier Circle, unfortunately, we won't have enough permanent supportive housing units to fully uh, cover the need that exists in our community. So the hope is in the short term that, you know, once Pacham in partnership with the city, if they're able to move the beginning of their uh, fall and winter season up, um, that that will provide uh, space available for everyone who's there in the city to be able to uh, just the decision that the city manager made relative to the curfew. Um, but that has certainly been the, the biggest issue, both for the press and, and, and staff and council kind of consuming discussion and attention for us. Um, that's it. And Mr. Garanto, so what we do is just go and share from your, from your seat in the city, what's going on in the city? Yeah, well, uh, Michael stole a lot of my thunder, but he started on something, which is an all consuming effort of the way initiative at moment. Sweeping public hearing on the 14th uh, for uh, a listening session where we had 110 uh, speakers in addition to the written comments. And just in case there's any doubt, um, I can say that Manic County does not have an exclusive uh, uh, claim on consternation. <laughs> Um, we are moving forward with that process. It's uh, it's sort of a little bit of you know, paradox. We seem to be getting closer and closer to the end, but not quite getting to the end. Uh, and that has that, that has sort of been the major uh, sort of focus of the commission. Certainly, um, I will say that uh, we are sort of uh, sort of struggling to put together sort of the hard bits that come with during that process. So that's about what I've got there. Thank you. Louisa County. Well, we've been having some fun on the week. No. <laughs> we just finally, after 18 months, um, settled our STR indecisions and arguments. And um, we finally, we can't tell me matter to run different ends of it. I voted for it. You know, not, you wanted to see a CUP put in place. I voted for, uh, well, we did pass through, which was no CUP. 
um, and uh, some lighter restrictions and regulations on our short term rentals. Um, we also had a brief discussion about um, raising our occupancy tax. Um, and we did we, we set a hearing on that, didn't we, for the next meeting? Yeah, we have a public hearing on that. And we're looking at possibly, we are at 2% right now. We're looking at possibly raising it to 6 yeah, I think nine because Pennsylvania is going up to nine. I mean, and all our short term rentals are right there at the lake. The majority of them are, and the issues that we have are at the you know. um, rest of the county, it's, it's not really a big issue. Um, the rest of the short term rentals are pretty much in ag, um, which the attorney general um, did uh, determine the determination that um, ag is exempt from. Any type of um, regulations, um, if it falls under that. <laughs> David Jenkins and I said, yeah, so we were looking at short term rentals that fall into residential only. In that, the only thing it turned down for that was basically it had to be like a working operation. It has to be an operator. It has to be a It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a farm. It's got to be a working operation. Yeah, and that's what most farms are in. Yeah. They're working operation farms and, and they have short term rentals to run our family. It definitely seemed like there was plenty of yeah. like I have a BI yeah. there it's working. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, no, exactly. You're, you're, you get, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing to add to that is the Attorney General's guidance is guidance, but it's court precedent that actually sets court case law. Mm -hmm. So it really, someone, I mean, you know, alcohol abandoned in the hack zone, you can know, move there, start SDR, to good alcohol, and see what the court system said. Well, not just then, then you have to appeal it and then see if the appellate yeah, we'll will hold up. Yeah. Well, anyway, so we, we, you know, settled through that. And I'm really hoping that the development you're talking at that time is Crossroads has something to do with the grocery store. Because I don't know what you're talking about. I am tired of getting hit about, why did we get the grocery store up here? <laughs> and then I'm like, go talk to Flavanna. <laughs> There's a fucking wall. It's fine. I don't know what any of you are tomorrow would explain. It's a big tricycle. 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 It's a big yeah, go ahead. Tell me about that. We're putting. We're going to go to the next to the North Valley. And then the other one is in the rural area next to the Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
the day is paid back there with all the money there for free. No, we'll see. We're surprising that. I'm not going to say 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 that. But that was a stupid judge. He just let us know that he could help us do anything after that day. And he called me, and then he called me in his flat, and we're like, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> The, the SDR and I hope that that turns out well. This is definitely a problem for both sides. The problem the area that we had a problem with is around the lake where they are. It's residential and it's small lots. And now you have, well, we had it here. We just, the rest of it didn't know that. They've been at least read the same. And advertising, we got three visitors home, but actually, not even the people. But anyway, that, that they can't the go there is where we have a lot of problems. They can pay by the right in the back. Yeah. So, it would be interesting in the next coming years to see if everything is there. I hope it's one of that. And I feel like it could. It might be like a little If you had somebody come in for the city, you know, rather than a very like a little small amount, the likelihood of you getting past the thing to the big swing. But now, uh, the people are going to try to live in a piece of fire. Now, we do. I got a feeling we haven't seen the last two hours before that. The county take care of all of the policing problems and everything else is there. So we'll see. We'll see. I have a feeling we'll be something we'll start to do. Well, we have a few years. Yeah, yeah right. Not like, well, I'm some magazine or something that said basically you know, yeah, we have a gallery one of the best places to own a real estate investment property. Um, yeah, in the market here. It was in like a few. What's, what's happening there is what what yeah, the rest of the people are going to do is they're going to try to make A good amount of people who are coming out of DC in Northern Virginia who want their retirement home that they can, and so they're they're buying their homes, so renting them out for X number of years until they're retired. We people come and speak to us, and this is where they plan to retire when it's paid off, and this is how they're using it. So it was kind of a there are the corporations, and it's kind of a mix out there of. Um, People who are doing that. It's a unique situation for a right? Like, don't you get it? Right? You will learn. Don't really get a title or something. Don't want to fall. But then every night, you know, unless you get in the house, you don't want to fall. Yeah. You don't want to fall. 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 You We've got a very specific homestay ordinance in Albemarle that we've worked on for a long time, and it varies from both area for those who are against natives to out the world, it goes by size and acreage and all that. And we don't allow a whole house running in the fence areas. And they can only do two bedrooms, so they get limits how many people can be in there. And if they want anything more, they have to put in for a special use permit. We do more special use permits on home stays than we do. Yeah, yeah. We made so that is what I can do. We are all in the closet. It's now about right. Yeah, there are some. Some we have now where they you could have only a few years in the pocket. 
over and over again, just trying to get my own constituents to show up. They don't want to do the chaos, so they just send me a text message. Uh, that was good. Um, beyond that, that's about all I know. Or any other exciting things? Just zoning on the back end of the comp plan. The dynamic board will likely change come January, so we'll see how that changes things as we go into zoning. Um, And it was about the fastest growing population for homelessness. Yeah. Anybody that's there to venture on that no, population? Is. No, no. Uh, it is baby boomers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's in particular women. Baby boomers. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, when you look at the savings rates of most Americans, uh, it, it is not. An unsurprising event that we started to see this in conjunction with, you know, housing becoming so unaffordable but for so many people that you're starting to really see this happen. And, I, and I've been saying for a long time that it's going to be really hard for uh, for us to look at a lot of old people that once had middle class lives but they're on the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to really have to have a soul searching event to look at that as we. Go through the process of saying, hey, it's fine, it's all great for me, but I've got mine, you don't have yours. And, you know, someday you won't have yours you know, on that street. You know, you so 35% increase in homelessness uh, in the last couple of years, with the majority of that coming from baby boomers in particular, like 65% of that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Right. And we are there. Next meeting will be uh, November 2nd. We've got the finance, just a reminder, the finance executive committee at 6th, which is, uh, will be for the annual audit report. And we'll be getting the annual financial audit report. That's always a barn burner, so make sure you're in attendance for that one. Uh, and then we'll go through the quarter one financial reports. And with that, uh, someone likes to make a motion to adjourn. I'm going to move. I'll second. It's going to be bold. No abstentions on this one. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. <laughs> abstentions? All right. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Night. Feel better, Kate. Thank you.